Mr. Recognize yeah. for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Secretary Chu, can you tell me, do you know what the value of the building uh, that Solyndra owns, the one that was, that was built, uh, do you know what the value of that is as far as the bankruptcy court is concerned or what the sales price might be? No, I don't. All right, and here's my concern. Eight to 11 months ago when you were making the decision to subordinate, you said that you thought it was better instead of calling it quits in December and, and not giving them the additional $95 million, and instead of sub subordinating, or you all made the decision you were going to subordinate because you thought it would put the taxpayers in a better position. The problem is, you told me earlier you didn't know the value of the intellectual property and the patents that the company might own. You don't know the value of the building. If you don't know those things in a fire sale or in a situation like this, how can you make a determination eight to, just eight to 11 months ago that it was in the taxpayer's best interest to subordinate? I think it's a rhetorical question because I don't know that you can answer that. And let me move on to the next question that I have because yeah. we also talked earlier, Mr. Barton brought it up first and then I brought up this uh, legal analysis by Morris, Morrison and Forrester. And all we have is the draft. And I don't think that you've intentionally misled the committee, but I think that there may never have been a legal opinion from Morrison and Forrester on this, a written legal opinion. Do you know if there was actually a written legal opinion made? I do know that there was an email, a determination by Morrison and Forrester uh, of what, and they concurred with us in an email, in a final email, saying that this was a reasonable uh, interpretation of the law and they concurred with us. I don't believe we've seen that and so if you could provide that email for us I would greatly appreciate it because uh, we, we just haven't seen it and so you know we have a draft that says it has a whole section entitled you can't subordinate basically it says subordination is not uh, allowed so that's of, of great concern and if there was if all there was was an email and there originally was going to be a full legal memo can you find out why there was not a full legal memorandum done from Morrison and Forrester in regard to the subordination issue. Can you do that for us? Yes. Well, and, and let me say that the reason that I, I question this is is that you have referred to it a number of times today, but it appears that you 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 know relied on maybe some casual communication with them, but never got the formal opinion, even though one was started. And it appears you relied significantly and exclusively on your own folks but a lot of times you know when you're trying to make an important decision just as when you're making an important decision for your children you consult other people before you decide okay is, are they too young to have a new car or what about that cell phone and in this case you have acknowledged that you were making a very significant decision on the subordination of this loan and yet you didn't consult with justice you didn't pay attention to other folks OMB and Treasury and it, it appears I mean if my kids did that to me and that's what they were saying. Well, well, we didn't check. It's, it appears that the, the, the Department of Energy adopted the policy of, well, it's better to ask for forgiveness than to make sure we get the answer in the first place because we're afraid they'll come back and say we can't do it. And it is true that without that subordination, you knew that this company would go bankrupt last December. Isn't that true? Well, let me, let me first um step back and tell you what I know of uh, the interactions with uh, Morrison Foster. There was an initial uh, uh, email that said we have to step back and look at this and then there was a, a, a final determination by Morrison Foster in an email that was sent to us that said uh, the determination made by the Did you not see Council's I, office I, in I the Department of Energy was, was... Did you not see their full draft which was pages long in which one section said it, it highlighted and flagged that subordination was not allowed you didn't see that all you saw were a couple of little brief emails no I, what I said is that uh, certainly the subordination of the initial loan was not allowed and they right. made that very clear but in the end the all final right. email let's get to that point then I understand what you're saying um, and if you, there is something more than that we'd like to have it and if I could have that email here, here's my problem with that at the beginning, you know, the initiation of the loan. If you read the, the memorandum, did you read the Susan Richardson memorandum? Yes. Okay. If you read that and you read it closely, including the footnote, I believe it's the second footnote in that memorandum, you will see that the conclusion was, was that we can do it. We don't have to have an excuse of default. We can do it at any time subsequent to the original closing of the loan. And so I ask you, because you're a very bright man, much brighter than I am, you know, I know you didn't leave your brain at the door. I ask you if it makes sense to you that Congress would pass a bill that says at 10 o'clock in the morning you can't subordinate the loan to anybody else. 
But after eating lunch and reflecting on it, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon of that very same day, you legally could subordinate the loan because that is the opinion that Susan Richardson puts forward if you take it to its natural conclusion, and particularly when you look at that footnote. Does that make you as a thinking, intelligent man? Uh, as a thinking, intelligent man, uh, th it was very clear that at the time of the origination of the loan, we could not subordinate. We did not subordinate. But two hours later, based on the opinion that you're relying on today and that you've relied on this whole time, you could have. Do you really think that makes sense, that that would have been Congress's intent? Well, by two, if you mean by two hours later, do you mean... I mean about four hours point? later, but uh, two hours well, later is the same. I'm just giving you an example that you ate lunch and you reflected months. on it and you had a new opinion. Well, uh, then when the loan uh, became stressed and in trouble... Um, but there's nothing in the Richardson opinion. Am I not correct? I am correct. But I'll just tell you, there's nothing in there that says it had to be stressed. In fact, they talked about that and said it didn't have to be stressed, that you could do it at any time that you wanted to once the original loan had taken place, which means you could circumvent the, in the entire law based on the reading of the law that your department decided to take. And I submit to you that as a thinking intelligent man, if you weren't sitting here on the hot seat today, you would have to admit that that does not make sense. And clearly, what you all did violated the intent of Congress, and I believe the letter of the law as well. Thank you. I yield back my time. Gentleman yields back this time. We. Uh